HTV-1, also known as the HTV Demonstration Flight or HTV Technical Demonstration Vehicle, was the first Japanese Space Agency JAXA H-2 transfer vehicle, launched in September 2009 to resupply the International Space Station and support the JAXA Kibo, Kibo Kibo, Hope Laboratory or GEM. It was an unmanned cargo spacecraft carrying a mixture of pressurized and unpressurized cargo to the space station. After a 52-day successful mission, HTV departed the ISS on 31 October 2009 after being released by the station's robotic arm. The spacecraft re-entered the Earth's atmosphere on 2 November and disintegrated on re-entry as planned. Payloads HTV-1 carried four and a half tons of payload, lower than the six-ton maximum payload of the HTV in order to allow the spacecraft to carry additional propellant and batteries for the in-orbit verification phase of the flight. In the unpressurized logistics carrier, the HTV-1 carried SMILES superconducting submillimeter wave limb emission sounder and HREP HECO RAIDS experiment payload, which both were installed in the GEM-exposed facility on the ISS. The pressurized logistics carrier carried 3.6 tons of supplies for the International Space Station. It consisted of food 33% of weight, laboratory experiment materials 20%, robot arm and other hardware for GEM 18%, crew supplies including garments, toiletries, personal mail and photographs, fluorescent lights, waste buckets 10%, and packing materials 19%. <laughs> <laughs> Carrier rocket. HTV-1 was launched on the maiden flight of the HIIB carrier rocket. The HIIB-304 configuration was used, with a Type 5 SH payload fairing. Before launch, two captive firing tests were conducted on the rocket which was to launch HTV-1. The first test, which consisted of firing the first stage for 10 seconds, was originally scheduled to occur at 2.30 Coordinated Universal Time on 27 March 2009, however it was cancelled after the launch pad's coolant system failed to activate. This was later discovered to have been due to a manual supply valve not being open. The test was rescheduled for the 1st of April, but then postponed again due to a leak in a pipe associated with the launch facility's fire suppression system. The test was rescheduled for the 2nd of April, when it was successfully conducted at 5 o'clock Coordinated Universal Time. Following this, the second test, which involved a 150-second burn of the first stage, was scheduled for the 20th of April. This was successfully conducted at 4 o'clock Coordinated Universal Time on of April, following a two-day delay due to unfavorable weather conditions. A ground test, using a battleship mock-up of the rocket was subsequently conducted on of July. <laughs> <laughs> Operation Topic. Launch and rendezvous with ISS HTV-1 was successfully launched at 17 hours 1 minute and 46 seconds Coordinated Universal Time on 10 September 2009, to the initial orbit of 299.9 km apogee, 199.8 km perigee, 51.69 degrees inclination, planned 300.0 plus or minus 2 km, 200.0 plus or minus 10 km, 51.67 plus or minus 0.15 degrees. The launch took place from the Yoshinobu Launch Complex at the Tanegashima Space Center, and was the first to use the second pad of the complex. Flight operations are chronicled using Flight Day FD, the ISS crew timeline. 
Arrival of HTV-1 occurred during Expedition 20, Gennady Padalka, Commander, Michael Barrett, Nicole Stott, Frank De Wynne, Roman Romanenko, and Robert Thirsk. Expedition 21 supervised departure of HTV-1, Frank De Wynne, Commander, Roman Romanenko, Robert Thirsk, Maxim Surayev, Jeffrey Williams, and Nicole Stott. The station was visited by spaceflight participant Guy Laliberté. No Japanese astronaut was present during the attached phase of the HTV-1 to the ISS, the launch day is FD-1. On FD-3 September 12, HTV-1 performed the demonstration tests of ISS proximity operation such as collision avoidance maneuver. It went successfully and on FD-6, ISS mission management team approved the final approach. On 17 September, HTV-1 rendezvoused with the International Space Station. It arrived at the approach initiation point, 5 km behind the space station at 13.59 Coordinated Universal Time, and began its final approach sequence at 15.31. It approached to within 10 meters 33 feet of the station, from where it was grappled using the Canadarm2 robotic arm of the space station, operated by Nicole Stott. Initial capture occurred at 1947 Coordinated Universal Time, with the procedure being completed at 1951. Robert Thirsk then used Canadarm2 to move it to a ready-to-latch position over the Nadir CBM port of the Harmony module. It arrived at this position at 2208 Coordinated Universal Time, and by 2212 four latches had engaged to hold it in place. Sixteen bolts were subsequently driven in to achieve a hard mate. It remained berthed at the station until October 30. Topic departure from the ISS and re-entry expedition 21 crew members, Nicole Stott, Robert Thirsk and Frank De Wynne completed the final steps of preparing for HTV's release from the ISS. These steps included disconnecting the final remaining power jumper line, closing the Node 2 nadir hatch, depressurizing the vestibule and performing leak checks, removing common berthing mechanism bolts and deploying latches and unberthing the HTV-1 with the space station remote manipulator system. While passing above the Pacific Ocean, the robotic arm of the space station released the HTV-1 positioned at 12 meters below the station on 30 October 2000. The departure was delayed for one ISS orbit to avoid debris, Cosmos 2421. HTV-1 was loaded with 199 items of discarded equipment and waste of 727.7 kg, as well as 896 kg empty racks, totaling 1,624 kg. At 17.32 UTC, HTV-1 was released from SSRMS and began its planned maneuvers to leave the station proximity. HTV-1 gradually departed from the ISS orbit by performing several thruster burns and entered to its solo flight mode. The HTV flight control team sent commands for three engine burns at 1455, at 1625, and at 2053, November 1, UTC, to prepare the vehicle's destruction in Earth's atmosphere. The first de-orbit engine burn lasted for approximately eight minutes and was completed at 15.03, November 1. The second de-orbit engine burn lasted for approximately nine minutes and was completed at 16.34. Following the second de-orbit maneuver, the HTV-1 was inserted into an elliptic orbit with an altitude of 143 km perigee and 335 km apogee. HTV-1 began the third and final de-orbit maneuver at 2053 on November 1 as planned, while the spacecraft was passing over Central Asia. The maneuver that lasted for about eight minutes was successfully wrapped up at 2101 as the spacecraft flew near the southern half of Japan. According to the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, HTV-1's atmospheric re-entry occurred at 2125, at 120 kilometers above and over the Pacific Ocean just off the coast of New Zealand. 
The fiery re-entry and disintegration in the Earth's atmosphere marked the successful completion of the HTV-1's 52-day mission. It is believed that some of the surviving debris from the HTV would have likely fallen in a rectangular area stretching across the Pacific Ocean between New Zealand and South America, according to the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency. Topic Gallery. Topic. See also Automated Transfer Vehicle H2 Transfer Vehicle Progress Spacecraft Dragon Cygnus Spacecraft List of unmanned spaceflights to the ISS <laughs>